Mic is on. Mic is on. Everything is on. Yay. Then I say we should kickstart this Q and A. I am happy to have a Q and A today because, as you have seen, we've run around a lot in the last few weeks. So having a day when you just do one clip with one camera that is quick to edit is sometimes, you know, it's good to do them because I think it's fun to talk a bit more, uh, get a little deeper into things, but it's also, you know, nice to collect a little bit of energy. So I'm going to get right into it. I decided that today we're going to do a Q&A strictly on sort of personal stuff. No car stuff, no film stuff, no nothing like that. Just general life stuff. Doesn't that sound good? This is good. You know, I'd like to mix it up a little bit. So, hold on one second. All right, we're gonna get right into it. First question. Do you ever feel like this life is going to end? It's directed to both you and me. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I hope it's gonna end because it would be nice to have like some sort of a normal life. On the other hand, I love what we're doing now, but of course, yeah, it's gonna end at one point, but I haven't really thought about when. I agree. Yeah, it's like, we of wake course, up. Of course, we don't want to travel like this our entire life, but if that's what they mean. or Yeah, I guess. I guess what we do is that we take one day at a time, try to do our best, and then I guess we'll keep doing that until, you know, some other, op some other better option comes up. Yes. How has life changed after starting the vlogs? Um... Mm -hmm. They are, yeah, they are way, way, way busier, way less downtime and a lot more work, but it's also really rewarding and it's super fun and I enjoy every second of it. And on the positive side, it means that I have less multiple things to work on and I have, the vlog takes up more of my, my time. So it's more, instead of doing a million different things, this is like my main thing, which I think is really nice. And... Coming back to Sweden, I did realize that going to Sweden has changed a lot because now I, you know, I've, I've always been a person that's been recognized on the street, but now being in Sweden, it was a whole other level. Like when, when I walk into a store and someone recognized me, it's fun. But when you have people like screaming and like, and like going, I mean, of course, not Justin Bieber crazy, but like it's, it was kind of surreal to see. So that's changed quite a bit. But you know, I guess that comes with being on YouTube every single day. I guess a pretty usual question. How can you afford everything you do? Well, first of all, I have been a pro skier for 20 years and we've had sponsors. I worked pretty hard, I built some brands and now with YouTube, when we are at the views that we are, then we are, um, you know, we're making some money off it. And the biggest thing is that I'm not afraid to spend money. I don't think that money is being made to kept in a box. I think that you should use the money you make. I mean, don't be done with it, but you know, live your life. Like it could happen tomorrow. So why like hold everything back? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a mix of everything. And of course, sometimes it might seem like we have more than we do, but you know, it's, um, yeah, we try to find a good balance of, of spending enough where we enjoy everything to the fullest. And at the same time, saving a bit if things were to change. What do you think about Snapchat and why don't you use it? I mean, there's so many different platforms and in all honesty, I barely have time to check Instagram anymore because it's like filming, 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 like booking a ticket, traveling somewhere. So I used to do Snapchat a bit, but if I would do Snapchat, that would be like, you know, it would reveal what we're doing in the vlogs. So that would kind of ruin the surprise if we're doing something fun. So, I mean, I think, you know, all the platforms are good. I prefer YouTube and I like to focus on one and yeah, do a few photos for Instagram because I like taking photos. Uh, can you please talk about your success as an entrepreneur and your thoughts around it? I wouldn't really call myself a successful entrepreneur. I have started a few companies and they are growing, they are doing super well, but I think that when I compare myself to people who I think are very successful entrepreneurs, they have come way further than I have. So, uh, I mean, my general life philosophy is that I have, if I have an idea, I just figure out how can I make that happen? Like how, who do I need to contact in order to start that? Or what do I need to learn in order to do that? So, I mean, I wouldn't say in any way that I'm great at it. I'm, I'm actually pretty good at analyzing brands and market opportunities. 
and then not being afraid of trying it because in order to learn how to do things you got to try and usually when you try you fail but you learn something and then hopefully that turns to something good in the end which place do you prefer out of all the locations you live and stay at our favorite location I have so many. Yeah, really hard. It's been really nice staying with Riley in LA in their new house. Yeah. Love that. Um, it was sick being up in Canada with Bushfield. I love Indonesia with the surfing and the friendly, you know, Balinese people. I love coming home to Monaco because it's like small and nice. I love the house in Marbella. So yeah, I'm sorry, I can't pick one. It's just uh, that's our problem for the future, like where should we settle down? And at this point, we can't really figure that out. So uh, we're gonna keep searching the globe and see if we find that one perfect spot where we just wanna stay and never leave ever again. What's your biggest goal in life? That's a big question. I guess my biggest goal in life is to be happy and to know that I am treating all the ones that are around me well as well as I possibly can and that I feel uh, financial security in everything I do for, you know, my parents, Yanni and everything. And I don't have a giant goal. I just want to feel inner peace. Quite simple. But yeah, of course, like, yeah, sometimes financial things can help you find that inner peace. So yeah, maybe not the most intelligent answer. But yeah, I just want to wake up in the morning with a smile. And most days I do. Although some days are stressful and I wake up stressed and I want to be able to figure out how to live my life and do everything and wake up with a smile every single day. How do you get motivated to do a YouTube video every single day, which is such a hard process? It's like to me, if I'm committed to something, there's nothing that's going to stand in my way. Like at this point, I'm supposed to leave to the airport in 20 minutes. And you know, if I would skip this vlog, they would like, oh, I can chill and like just give Yanni a hug. But I'd be so disappointed with myself that I let like the laziness in myself overtake my commitment to doing a vlog every single day for one year. So I guess what gets me motivated is that I want to prove to myself that if I said that I can do something, I can really come through with it. And I think that's the main, main motivation. And I love filming, of course. And I also get a memory from every single day of an entire year. I guess next question is kind of uh, the similar. How can you keep working so hard? And it's like, I have this inner drive where I think that I am a terrible human being unless I perform to the highest level. So I think it's like, it's just that I don't feel well unless I know I am pushing myself to 110% and I'm trying to figure out how to get that down to 100% so I can sort of breathe a little more often. But then there's so many more things I want to do and learn and figure out, so it makes that difficult. But yeah, I just, I don't feel good if I'm lazy. I don't want to be a lazy person. I want to be a person that people look up to and say, wow, that guy is motivated and he gets stuff done. Here's a pretty interesting question, actually. Thanks to this question, I put on some music this morning when I was uh, checking my emails. There's never any music around in the background. Are you guys not into music or why is there never music around? And you remember this morning when I put yeah. on, I put on Matoma, which is one of my favorite remix artists. Um, and I do agree, music is great. It's just that somehow I forget to put it on. So thanks to that question, I'm gonna try to put on more music more often because that gets you in a good motivated mood. What is the plan? <laughs> Here's a pretty funny question considering the last four or five uh, hours. What is the plan for traveling the upcoming month slash weeks? Well, for the last four hours, I've been trying to figure out how to get to Stockholm because there's a strike going on here in Paris. So I am unsure whether I'm going to be, so I am unsure whether I'm going to be able to fly to Stockholm tonight and I have to be there tomorrow for a photo shoot and a TV uh, appearance. So I have been chucking private jets. I have been calling SIS to check and fix and do all this. So hopefully I'll get to Stockholm tomorrow. And then after that, I am probably heading, you're heading to Marbella, right? Yes. So I think we're heading to Marbella, like try to regroup a little. Cause since Marcus left, we've had Andreas with us, we've had Ben with us and we're trying to like 
you know, put it all into one working system. So I'd love to come home and like land a little bit. And I think we're going to Marbella. And then I have lots of plans, but then we haven't time, had time to set that many plans quite yet. So I will update you once we have a plan because I would also love to have a plan. Here's another one that we discussed this morning. What is your favorite thing about Yanni? There's lots of things I love about Yanni, but I'm gonna Aww. say that, yeah, of course. The one thing that I love the most about Yanni is that she can wake up with the worst cold, having slept two hours, saying that she feels awful, and she still looks beautiful like anything I've ever seen. So that is the best thing about Yanni. Not how I am. <laughs> She's really nice too, but that is to me like to every morning wake up to that amazingly cute little face of hers is the best thing about her. Thanks, love. All right, next one. Do you get mad at the slow growth of subscribers given the incredible content you try to push every day? It seems other channels grow much faster. Um, you know, I'm super happy that we've grown. Like I never expected to grow to the size we are now and I don't really look at how many subscribers we have. I look at likes, comments, and I try to just focus on creating good content and then whatever else happens, happens. And I think we're now at a point where if we get more, that's great. If we don't, then, you know, at least we have such a solid following that it's motivating enough to keep doing the vlogs. So I don't really look at you know, numbers like that. Because of course we could clickbait and like try to do every opportunity we can to like make things that would be like super YouTube friendly. And that's maybe something I'm bad at. Like I just want to make videos about what we do and not like try to sell my soul to the devil to make the biggest YouTube channel on this planet. Because yeah, I'm not in YouTube to be the biggest YouTuber. I'm in there to make the best content, that's what I want to do. And then if we get more subscribers, that's great, but I am in no way frustrated. I think we're growing like crazy, and I want to say thank you to everyone who subscribes and watches everything we do. It's uh, pretty cool to see all the feedback. And especially, thank you to all the guys that come up to me and say that you're motivated by what we do. I, that's, uh, that's probably the biggest accomplishment with this vlog, if I can inspire people to work hard and not be afraid to go for your dreams. Um, I guess here's one for both me and Yanni. Mr. Phil, he's always asked, uh, Mr. Phil, he's always wondering why you're living in a small apartment in Monaco. Well, in Monaco, real estate is incredibly expensive and I rented this place 12 years ago. So if we were to move now to something 20% bigger, it'd be 10 times more expensive. So it just doesn't make any sense to move apartments as we have the best location, like a fantastic building, parking outside, and we love the apartment. So as soon as, or as long as there's not a kid popping out, I don't think that we're going to move anywhere. Oh, I love the apartment. Yeah. So we'll see. And if, it's enough for the two of us. Oh, for the two of us. It's yeah. perfect. But what about that kid? Is there a kid coming? No, it's not. No, well, there's no kid coming. But if it does, we probably have to overlook the living situation. Yes. When will you propose to Yanni? Or when well, will I propose to you? No. No? Uh, no, no, like, you are not allowed to propose. What? No, I am old fashioned. I think that I should be the one proposing. But if I told you guys now, then that wouldn't be a surprise now, would it? No. And, and like, you know me, if I'm doing something, it has to, it's not like, hey, good morning, you want to marry me? Like, I have to try to figure something good out. Mm -hmm. And I have to try to figure out if I like her enough. We'll see. Whatever happens, happens. But so far, we're, we're doing pretty good, so. What else do we have here? There's just so many questions. I could do six hours of Q&As. Uh, how do you get up so early in the morning when you're really tired? I always stop my, stop my alarm and fall asleep again after I stopped it. Well, I get up early in the morning because I love working when no one's around, everyone's sleeping, it's quiet and nothing. Like that, that is probably what drives me out of bed that I know that if I get out now, I'll have so many quiet hours. So that's why I love setting my alarm at 4.30 or 5. But it also requires me to get to bed in a decent hour because I try to get, I want to get eight hours of sleep, but I have lately not been getting eight hours. I've been getting more like five to six, which is not enough. So that's why I need to work on my scheduling. But yeah, working when uh, everything's quiet, that, that's my motivation to get out of bed. 
Uh, what do you do that you are always friendly in stressful situations? I think ever since I bought my first Lambo, I kind of expect people to have a certain image of me that, you know, that I would be cocky and not be the person that I want to be. So I expect whoever I meet to think something bad of me. So then whoever I meet, I try to be as friendly as I can to try to show the opposite. Not that I know if I have to show the opposite, but I think, I mean, who, who doesn't like friendly people? So I try to be friendly whenever I can. Um, what is the best success in life you can give slash share to your followers or other people? I think when I was younger, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I, I mean, if I compare the workload and dedication I put into what I'm doing now, compared to when I was younger, like now it's like 4,000% more. Like when I was younger, it was like partying and like random stuff and TV games. And like, I didn't, I wasn't focused on what I wanted. So I think the sooner you can figure out what you want to do and then start focusing on that, the better results you're going to get. But then of course you should also be young and party and have fun. And it's hard to give advice, really hard. If I'd give myself some advice, I would have said, do not buy a bunch of alcohol to seem cool at a nightclub because no one will ever remember that and it's like the dumbest thing you could ever do. Um, so that would be the one advice I would do. And then when it comes to building cars, build them smartly so they can be resellable. Those would be my two main advices. And, and number three, ask people how they are doing instead of telling them what you've done. Those would be my three recommendations to a younger you. For both me and you, Yanni, yep. what were you guys like in high school? I was like the super skiing, sporty guy who never went to a party. I tried to do my best in school. I wasn't like the quickest learner in any way. I was great in sports and like all the artistic stuff and cooking and like the random stuff. Uh, the rest, I had high grades, but I had to work pretty hard for it because our parents always said, unless you do well in school, you will not go skiing. And I did good in school. You know how I was at school. Okay, I'll tell you. Because I can <laughs> tell that Yanni is really into whatever it is she's doing back there. I'm editing photos and I don't feel really good, so I can't really talk. Yeah, she was sick as well. So, Yanni was really smart. She was always sitting in front of the class, right at the very front, and listening during the, uh, during the classes, so that she never had to do any homework. And that made her um, get really good grades. So. You were really good in school, but you chose a different strategy than me, yeah. who was like not focused in school and then had to spend all afternoon trying to... Remember what they said. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we were both uh, pretty good until I dropped out. Yeah, I didn't drop out. I finished school. Yeah, you did. I dropped out. Uh, uh, uh. And we are, we're closing in on the end here. Really? Yeah. Where do you see yourself in 20 years? I want to have a dog. I want to have kids. I want to have a house where you can surf. I want to be married to Yanni. And I want to wake up with a smile. Where that is, I have no idea. I'm not one for setting too many plans. I just go about my life and try to do everything as good as I possibly can because I believe that that will lead me to where I want to go. Ben? Benjamin? Yeah? Can you send me the questions again? I deleted them. Oh. <laughs> I wrote the questions on my computer and then Benny's editing on it, so he sent it to my phone, and now, stupid as I am, I accidentally deleted that email. Merci beaucoup, monsieur! Hello, Yoon. I remember in an old vlog, you went to Mega China to buy some crap to build a prototype for a company. What happened to that? The crap I bought is now in prototype staging, so as soon as that's past prototyping, we are gonna show you what it is, because I'm sure that a lot of you guys are gonna want one of those, because it's an item that I think we are all in need of, and that's why I started the company. But as we all know, going from idea to actual production takes longer than we all want. But yeah, we're working full speed on that as well. You know, that's one of the things that keeps me busy that I don't talk about, that I'm trying to like get that off the ground as well. And then, um, are you still looking into developing property in Lombok? Yes, I am still looking into it. We are looking at, you know, the prices and stuff for the lots. So yeah, we're looking into it, but we haven't done any progress. Yeah, there's been lots of questions. Why haven't you married Yanni yet? And what? yeah, it's a good question. Sometimes like, I mean, we're, we're having a great thing going and, and sometimes you're a little busy to like try to figure out what else to do with it.
I mean, we don't stress. Out. I don't think. Yeah, you don't seem to stress about it. Maybe it's different in other countries. Like in Sweden, it's not that big of a deal. Like you no. can be together forever, and then you get married when you feel like it. Like, yeah, see, it doesn't change anything. No. So why stress about it? And then I went to my friend's wedding in Cannes, and that kind of like put the standards like up. Yeah. Up there. And you all remember that <laughs> wedding. Yeah, link. Uh, link up here for that wedding. And then you can probably understand why I need to figure out something good. Was it just one day where you woke up and turned things around to get to where you are today? Um, no, I think I was, even since I was like two years old, I was very motivated to do whatever it is I wanted to do that specific day. When I was like a year and a half, I made my mom like put on skis and like walk around the house. And she's like, really like, aren't you bored yet? And then when I was in Aura, I bought a welding machine to like make my own rails so I could have at home and then I started a bag company and then I went freestyle skiing and tried to figure out how to get good at that. Then I skied World Cup and then I started a vlog and I don't think I one day changed. I've always been like this and I do think that the vlog is the best thing I've found because it's like mega hard work but the hard work sort of pays off in a different way. Sometimes when you're skiing you can train for a whole month and then you straddle the first gate and all that training is in vain. So that's why I like the vlog, that it's like hard work really sort of paid off, pays off. All right, we have two more questions. You need a vacation, Yume. When are you gonna go to an exotic country again? I agree. What? Soon. Soon, I agree. I need a little bit of a vacation. Uh, it's been hectic um, with everything because I didn't plan on going to Japan and Canada and all this, but. I sort of found the love for skiing again, so right now I'm still sort of checking weather forecasts to see how the, the powder systems are moving, but hopefully pretty soon I can go to somewhere with a white beach, grab Yanni's hand and like relax for a little more than we have in the last little bit. Valid right now because I was shooting and I was like ending it, I'm like killed it. I realized that we ran out of memory space, so I went up, did it again, forgot to plug the mic, now I hope the mic is running, so we're gonna run the last question. The last question is, Yoon, will you survive the vlog? And yes, I do think I will survive the vlog. However, I do think I need to be a little smarter when it comes to sort of planning and figuring out how to make all these 24 hours in a day be enough. And then, yeah, I'm gonna survive it. I just need to get smarter and more experienced and maybe a little less of a perfectionist. But with that said, I'm gonna close this thing down, go hug this beautiful lady over here, and then hopefully this take actually worked. So I hope you enjoyed some just random thoughts. I like talking to the camera. It's like a little um, shrink session, I guess. So we will see you guys tomorrow. I'm hoping for better weather. Me too. We'll see what happens. So over and out from Paris. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. ciao.